Now let's look at the activity of executing test cases and logging defects. Notice on the right hand side here we have a list of all the test suites that we've authored. Here's the one we've been working on and we can see all the things that are in there. On the left hand side we have a test session. It's very easy to take all of the test cases in this suite and simply drag and drop them over on top of the session and it will put all the test cases in there. However, if we wanted to be selective, we could certainly take some of the test cases and we could just copy some of them and drag and drop them onto the session. In any case, what we've got here is the ability to set up our session very easily with drag and drop and start executing. When it's time to execute your test cases, you can simply go to the test results editor and you can uh, click on any one of your test cases and you can mark it as passed or failed. You can also click multiples and mark them passed or failed. And if anything does in fact fail, you can go ahead and log a defect. Here we can document the annotation or the reason for the failure. We can also attach screenshots or any other data or log files that we want. And we can also go ahead and create our defect. This is a nice out of the box defect form which allows us to fully describe uh, what the issue is, attach uh, screenshots or anything else to that defect and assign it perhaps to a developer. Now the third thing that testers or the QA department focuses on is bringing those defects that were found during the testing lifecycle back into the environment in a methodical way so that they have a stable area to continue testing in. The dashboard provides us with great linkage to show us, for instance, the defects that are ready for testing. We can simply click on this link and this shows us that we have two defects that are available to come in. If we drill into that defect, we can find the things that we're interested in. We don't want to blindly take changes into the QA environment, do we? We want to know who made the software changes, the priority and the details about what the defect was, what test case this happens to be for, and perhaps we want to be interested in what type of changes were actually made. This particular VB application may be something sensitive to QA. We want to know, in fact, that this is what we're bringing in. Bringing that change into our environment is simple as the, the QA person who is in that particular role, state changing this item to a QA state and saving the record, which will do the build and the deployment right into QA. And of course the tester and of course anyone else who looks at this defect record, including the developer or project managers or whomever, has full visibility into the deployment of that software. We can see that it has successfully gone into the QA environment.